Could the world's second-largest economy China be in trouble? What factors are contributing to its economic slowdown? As we delve into the current state of China's economy, it's clear that it's experiencing a slowdown. And it's not just a gentle deceleration. The country's zero-COVID strategy, coupled with weakening global demand and trade tensions, are all playing a part in this economic downshift. There's an air of anticipation around the official growth figures for the July to September quarter. These are expected soon, and if they reveal a contraction in the economy, the chances of a global recession could increase. Unfortunately, China's once attainable goal of achieving an annual growth rate of 5.5% now seems out of reach. The April to June quarter saw China narrowly avoiding contraction. However, the outlook for the rest of the year isn't as optimistic. Some economists are even predicting zero growth for this year. The decrease in demand for Chinese products, both domestically and internationally, is a major factor in this economic slowdown. China's trade tensions with major economies like the United States aren't helping either, and neither is the weakening when. Then there's the impact of COVID outbreaks in several cities, including important manufacturing hubs. These outbreaks have been disrupting economic activity across a range of industries. Additionally, Chinese consumers are holding back on spending money on food, beverages, retail, and tourism. This lack of consumer spending is putting major services under pressure. While factory activity showed signs of recovery in September, there are lingering concerns about the sustainability of this rebound. The slowing demand in countries like the United States due to higher interest rates, inflation, and the war in Ukraine is also impacting China's economy. Experts believe that Beijing could do more to stimulate the economy, but it seems unlikely to happen until the zero COVID strategy ends. Then there's the weak real estate activity and negative sentiment in the housing sector, which are also slowing growth. The property industry contributes significantly to China's GDP, so any change here has a major impact. China's economic goal seems to be drifting out of reach. But what led to this situation? Let's take a closer look in the next scene. To understand the present, we must delve into the past. So what was China's economy like a decade ago? A decade ago, China was a roaring dragon with an economy growing at an impressive pace. The Middle Kingdom was the world's factory, churning out products that were in high demand both domestically and globally. The Yuan, China's currency, was strong and steady, reflecting the nation's robust economic health. Fast forward to today and the picture is quite different. The dragon's roar has softened to a growl. China's once enviable growth rate has slowed considerably, falling short of its ambitious annual target of 5.5%. The demand for Chinese products, once insatiable, has diminished, both at home and across the globe. Trade tensions with major economies such as the United States have cast a shadow over China's export sector. The Yuan, once a symbol of the country's economic might, has weakened, mirroring the nation's economic woes. The zero-COVID strategy, while successful in controlling the pandemic, has taken a toll on the economy. Outbreaks in key cities, including manufacturing hubs, have disrupted economic activity across sectors. Consumers, wary of the virus, are holding back on spending, further straining the economy. The property industry, a significant contributor to China's GDP, is also feeling the pinch. Weak real estate activity and negative sentiment in the housing sector have added to the economic slowdown. Even the weather hasn't been kind. Extreme events such as severe heat waves and droughts have left a lasting impact on China's industries, leading to factory shutdowns and reduced profits. And then there's the regulatory crackdown on tech giants like Tencent and Alibaba, which has resulted in a drop in revenue and job losses. This move has made foreign investors cautious, potentially harming China's economic success in the long run. From being an economic powerhouse, China's growth has hit a speed bump. Let's explore why. The economic slowdown in China is not the result of a single factor. There are numerous domestic and international elements at play. Let us first consider the domestic factors. Demand for Chinese products has seen a significant decrease, not just internationally, but also within the country's own borders. This decline is due in part to the zero COVID strategy, which has had a profound impact on economic activity across industries. Various COVID outbreaks have led to disruptions in many cities, including key manufacturing hubs, further exacerbating the situation. Then, there's the issue of the weakening Yuan. 
A weaker currency makes imports more expensive and can lead to inflation which in turn can dampen consumer spending. On top of that, the negative sentiment in the housing sector and weak real estate activity have also slowed growth, given the significant contribution the property industry makes to China's gross domestic product. Now let's shift our attention to the international factors. Trade tensions with major economies like the United States have been a significant headwind for China. These tensions have led to tariffs and other trade barriers, hampering the free flow of goods and services and consequently impacting China's export-driven economy. Moreover, it's not just the U.S. where demand for Chinese products is waning. Higher interest rates, inflation, and geopolitical events like the war in Ukraine are causing a decline in demand in many countries. This global economic shift is not something China can control, but it's something it must navigate. In addition, the regulatory crackdown on China's tech companies has also had international repercussions. This has led to a drop in revenue and job losses, making foreign investors cautious about investing in China. In conclusion, the global economic landscape and China's domestic policies have both played a role in this economic shift. It's a complex interplay of factors that are shaping the current state of China's economy. Real estate and investment have been significant drivers of China's economy. However, they may also be contributing to its current struggles. Over time, an imbalance has developed between investments and consumption. Investments, particularly in real estate and infrastructure, have taken the reins, leading to a substantial increase in debt. This might seem like a solid strategy for growth at first glance. After all, investments in infrastructure and real estate can have a significant multiplier effect, leading to job creation, enhanced connectivity, and improved living standards. But, as with most things in economics, the devil is in the details. A large portion of these investments has turned out to be unproductive, resulting in wasted resources. Imagine constructing a massive skyscraper that remains largely vacant, or a sprawling highway that few vehicles traverse. These are sunk costs, investments that don't yield the expected return and instead become a drain on the economy. This propensity for unproductive investment is not a mere aberration. It's a systemic issue rooted in the reluctance of the Chinese government to shift towards consumption-led growth. Such a shift would require transferring assets and cash from corporations and the government to households. This is a daunting prospect given the vested interests involved and the fear of resource constraints for corporations and local governments. The consequence is an economy that's faltering, with growth slowing and post-COVID resurgence not quite materializing as expected. The government's response has been limited to small and piecemeal policy measures, disappointing many who anticipated a robust stimulus package. In essence, the reliance on investment-led growth, especially in real estate and infrastructure, seems to have reached its limits. It's like trying to squeeze water from a stone. Initially, you might get a few drops, but eventually you're left with a dry, unyielding surface. But is there a way out? China's economy is at a crossroads. What does the future hold? As we delve into the path that lies ahead, it's clear that the need of the hour for China is a shift towards consumption-led growth. This is no small feat, it's a necessary move for sustainable economic development, but it's laden with challenges. On one hand, consumption-led growth could breathe new life into the economy. It has the potential to unlock a wealth of resources, reinvigorate the market, and create a more balanced and less debt-ridden economic landscape, but on the other hand, it's a path that's riddled with obstacles. The first of these is vested interests. This transition would require transferring assets and cash from corporations and the government to households. It's a monumental shift that goes against the grain of the current economic structure. Corporations, which have long thrived on the existing model, may resist this change, fearing the potential resource constraints that could come with it. Moreover, local governments, which have been heavily reliant on investments, particularly in real estate and infrastructure, might also be apprehensive about this transition. They may worry about the potential for reduced funds, which could limit their ability to invest in local development and public services. In addition to these internal challenges, there's also the external factor of global perception. The world is watching China's economic journey closely. As we've seen, foreign investors are becoming increasingly cautious about investing in China due to the evolving economic landscape. This shift in perception could be a significant hurdle for China as it navigates this complex transition. Despite these challenges, the necessity for change is undeniable. 
As the reliance on investment-led growth reaches its limits and further investment only exacerbates the debt problem, it's clear that the traditional model is unsustainable. The road to consumption-led growth may be rocky, but it's a journey that China must embark on for the sake of its economic future. China's economic journey is a complex one, with its current struggles highlighting the need for a more balanced and sustainable approach. As we conclude our exploration of China's economic landscape, it's evident that the road to transformation is fraught with challenges. Yet, it's a journey that the nation must undertake to ensure a more balanced, sustainable, and resilient economy. This shift from investment-led growth to consumption-led growth is monumental. It requires overcoming internal resistance, managing global perceptions, and embracing a new economic paradigm. It's a journey that will likely be marked by trials and tribulations, but it's also one that could open up a world of fresh opportunities for the nation and its people. It's a journey that China has embarked upon, and the world watches with bated breath to see what the future holds for this economic powerhouse. As we've seen, the path ahead is not just about economic growth, but also about economic evolution. It's about creating an economy that is not just robust, but also resilient and balanced. It's about building a future where prosperity is widespread and sustainable. It's a challenging path, no doubt, but it's a path that holds the promise of a brighter economic future. If you enjoyed this deep dive into China's economic dilemma, don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content.